gigantic in this weekend, so we have three cars this, this time again, and um, yeah, let's see what we can do, you know. So we can get slow speed corners like turn five here or also the hairpin and the chicane which you use actually in second gear but then you also have like high speed corners like turn three and um, which you do in fourth gear you have turn nine which is actually a corner which you do with 180 um, so yeah I really like the track and of course you have a really long straight actually in the race which has reached 260 kph which is like the high the quickest we actually got and this was without the toe so pretty quick um, and then yeah, for us in the regional you nearly you break like after the 100 meter sign. Um, do the corner in third, accelerate out, yeah try to do this one flat and also this one on new tires. It's pretty flat, you know in F1 if you watch an onboard they do it also flat but um, for us because we are not don't have that much arrow and um, we are also fighting a lot there. Um, then you come to turn four, which you do in second, uh, third gear sorry. Um, you shift, uh, you break before the bridge, shift down, and really have to roll the entry speed in. The corner is really long, so you get the apex and then try, just try to hold it and use everything from the track. But you really have to hold it to to yeah be able to stay on track actually. Then turn five is downhill braking, which is actually quite um, hard. If the tires go off in the race, you lock the front left really easily that's also what happened to me right now because you break down and then you have to turn at the same point and you know braking and turning makes the inside tire the inside front tire lock really easily and once you have this flat spot so where the tire actually like stays it always starts locking again because always if you break again your tire is not round anymore so you always meet this flat spot again and this is pretty easy actually and you also don't really have any brake reference there so you kind of break on feeling then you go to turn seven which is like a uphill chicane uphill s which is pretty quick um, you have like a camber so you really have to use this one in the first one and then you have to accelerate out on the outside there's like a sausage which you should not take because then yeah you might have some struggles with your monocoque then you come to turn nine which is a really quick right hander as I said it's about 180 kph and um, yeah actually a pretty cool corner for us it's not flat we have to lift but lift is always getting smaller the better the tires are then we come we have a long straight again coming to the hairpin which is actually one of the slowest points on this track you arrive in fifth and shift down to second um, break point is around 100 meter again you accelerate out and then have like a left hander and then a right hander turn 11 and 12 I really like this Hard because you here's like a little bump and, and dry you you take this one flat and then break here um, this one is really cool because you turn in and then you have to wait until the car rotates and you can kind of play with the brakes a little bit to make the rear come and then you just go again you have like a curve and a runoff on the outside which you really have to use until the travel pad and then you have turn 30 where you use all of the inside curve you really have to go up to get the car rotated and good position for the last corner because the last corner is a chicane in second gear um, there are two bananas inside and you have to get as close as possible to those bananas to have a really good exit for this long straight coming up and then your pole position and ready to race <laughs> I can be a writer in a lion's den Watch 
sessions like always I finished P5 in the first one and P7 in the second one but I struggled a little bit with traffic and you know um, the conditions changed so much because it was actually raining a lot in the last two laps um, but yeah then the wall was going down so it was raining like crazy um, there was like a car going through and you just had like a lot of water <laughs> on the sides but yeah because of this weather changes i thought i'm gonna explain you what the difference between wet and dry actually is because i think well i don't know if so many of you know the difference so you know actually there are two things so of course there are two things like important in racing it's the driver and that's the car and also both of those things have to change so on the one side the car has is going to change so if it's dry and wet and you know it's gonna rain then you make the car softer all over around so you make the spring softer you make the in front and rear of course you put rain tires <laughs> which is like the easiest thing actually and you put um, max wing to just get the car like the aero max out in every single corner to have the most efficiency on braking and in high speed corners and yeah in general in corners to get the grip on the tires um, and then the, one of the biggest gambles let's say for us are tire pressures because you know um, if it's just like dry and started to rain you have to use different tire pressures compared to when it's like super wet and you nearly don't see anything anymore so that's always a gamble and um, yeah I'm not really able to go more into detail because every single team has their different ways of how to change the setup while when it's raining but that's like a kind of overview and then as a driver you also have to change the lines so if you watch F1 you see if it's raining they always do complete different lines and this is also there's a reason for so you know when when, you, when it's dry and you're driving there's always like this ideal line which is where the most grip is because the most tire wear off is there actually um, and this is the line which you don't want to be when it's wet because this line is super slippery so normally like for example Barcelona you are like in a normal hairpin let's say you always in dry want to break like if it's like a right hander you always want to break on the left side as much as possible use the whole track break straight turn in be on the apex like on the curb on the inside as close as possible maybe even on the curb and then accelerate out again you know so it's like a round line and um, that's how you do it in, in dry in the wet it's different so in the wet you try to break offline which means you try break middle of the of the track or like completely on the inside depends where in the rain most of the grip is and then you try to cross the ID line where you normally slide so you try to cross it turn the car offline and then accelerate out again in the rain the most important is to be as soon as possible straight again for the exit because it's really important to go on throttle and you cannot go as quick as compared to the drive because you don't have that much of grip um, and of course for every single different cor uh, corner there's also a different driving style let's say but the biggest rule in wet is to try to stay offline and try to avoid any grip which is which you see on track so the weekend is over um barcelona is as well done we just have two more racing ready to go and um yeah it was a mix of feelings you know we had the pace but i don't know why but luck is not on our side i was p4 fighting for p4 but 
you know, sometimes just shit happens. And um, at the moment, a lot of shit happens. So yeah, we'll see. I love the track, it was super much fun to be here. And yeah, next one is Pajeda, actually, already in two weeks. But first, I'm gonna remember out for next week in Berlin. I'm really looking forward to it, but I'm kind of scared how my life is gonna be. And yeah, follow me on Instagram because today I'm gonna take you with me and show you how I'm gonna be. So yeah, see you next time again, and thanks for watching.